Alrighty here, so let's begin a little discussion. And this discussion is not going to be a popular one because most people don't want to hear anything that's, that's not along thrown lines of opinions and thoughts. So, but here we go. Anyway, the question here that I'm bringing up is whether it's wrong or hateful to stand by and watch somebody commit suicide. If you say yes, then the question is when someone's committing spiritual suicide, do you say anything? Or do you say, well, you know, that's their business. If this, this is what makes them happy, let them die. But the thing is, this context, this could also be put in the context of, 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 of uh, physical reality. And, and there are people who are, do feel this way, that, uh, that when people want to commit suicide, that's their right. And they support these people 100%. If you want to die, go right ahead. I mean, look at how many people who will stand at the bottom of a building when someone's up at, at, at the top of the building and, jump, jump, and yell, jump, jump, jump. The question is... Are you that type of person? Are you the type of person to stand at the bottom of a building uh, where the person is physically committing suicide or spiritually committing suicide and encourage them to jump, encourage them to commit suicide? Or are you the type of person who says, well, you know what? Maybe this person has something wrong with them, has something that's bothering them, something that causes them pain. And is there a way to alleviate that pain so they don't have to commit suicide? Where, are you, where do you stand on this? I know where I stand. I can't walk by a person who's in pro who's having problems or in pain and not do anything about it. I at least have to stop and ask, you know, if there's anything I can do or any way I could help. And that's who I am as a person. So when I see someone committing spiritual suicide, this is the same approach that I take. And the thing is, I know from my research, from from the historical work that I've done, that um, that. Uh, it is not always been a matter. It is more often not in history that uh, homosexuality has not been okay uh, for uh, for spiritual life. That it does lead to spiritual death. Now, in the thousand from a thousand AD, and a lot of other religions other other than than the one that I, that I have found that does does work the best with, for myself, and actually meets up with uh, a lot of quantum physics that I've done. The research I've done in quantum physics meets up a lot with quantum physics. Uh, but for the majority part, most religions uh, will tell you that, uh, you know, they'll take the approach of, of penalization in terms of that uh, God hates homosexuals. And this isn't the case. It's not the case that God hates homosexuals or homosexuality. It's, it, it's an issue is whether or not... Um, it, 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 from from the historical point, from the ancient text that I've read, it's a question not that God does love everybody. Is the question not whether or not the person understands what they're doing is wrong, that, that it is dangerous for the soul, that they are in in spiritual peril, and are able to extricate them from themselves, extricate themselves from this. And the only way by 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 un, by doing this is by recognizing yes that there is a problem here and that. Something has to be done in order to resolve this. But the thing is, it's not an issue of that God is going to hate you and, 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 and zap you dead. And if that were the case, um, well, the Pope would be dead. Because for those of you who don't know this, if you go back and study the entire history of the Christian Church, you'll find the papacy from about 1000 AD on has been in, in heresy. That, that means the Pope from about 1000 AD on is a heretic classified by the ancient Christian documents as a heretic? Is he in hell? More than likely, there are more than more than one type. Of, there is going to be more than one pope who hasn't properly recognized that what he did in heresy was wrong, and refused to say sorry for it. He refused to understand that you know this was wrong. And the thing is, if you look back at the ancient text, you'll see that. It wasn't simply just homosexuality that, that was the issue. There were other things the issue. If you go into the Hawaiian Islands, into a lot of the different tribal uh, cultures, you'll find the case where uh, brothers and sisters, fathers and daughters, mothers and sons will marry each other in order to uh, uh, preserve their royal, their royal uh, uh, bloodlines. This was even practiced in the Christian kings in, in terms of the European, the European royalty. royalty European, 
excuse me, European royalty is highly inbred. Not a little not a little bit inbred, but highly inbred. And we know that these cause physical problems in addition to uh, uh, spiritual and what call psychological. For those of you who don't understand this, spiritual problems and psychological problems are one and the same because psychi, psychologia, that's the Greek for psychology. That means the psychi means soul. So when you're talking about psychology and spiritual problems, they're one and the same thing. And the only thing is that most psychologists and most psychiatrists don't believe in God anymore. They don't believe in the soul. And so they've dismissed the entire spiritual aspect of it. So if you want to bring the spiritual aspect back into these things again, then you're going to have to look at and see whether or not uh, homosexuality, including also uh, sexuality, including uh, I said the uh, incestual love, uh, then there is adult child love. You can look at uh, India has the deletes. If you'll, you'll see that, or what they call untouchables. And you can look into there, you'll see that it is permissible inside Indian society uh, under the Vedic, the Vedic uh, uh, levels of society that a higher born person can marry a girl as young as three years old. This is why you're seeing rapes of children as young as three years old inside of India. This is a, a, not any cultural problem, it's a religious problem. This is part of the religious culture. So it's not enough simply, it's not enough to say, oh, as long as a person loves somebody. Because these things have been around. They're, these are, are, they've, been, they've been there in history in, in, throughout the, uh, man's existence. And there is enough written in the ancient text that will tell you that the path, the left-handed path, the path to darkness, begins and ends with sexuality. And sexuality is the path to darkness. And that sexuality is not love. And because sexuality acts against love. It acts against affection. Proper love, true love, is affection. It is not sexual in nature. It is the perversion of love where you have the sexualization of love, the sexualization of affection. And to this degree, homosexuality is this perversion of love. It is this sickening of love. It is the destruction of love that causes a lot of the problems. And if this is not understood and realized that the soul is in peril, then all that's going to happen is at the end of the life, if you don't realize that your soul is in peril, this doesn't mean you're going to change your behavior habits. It simply means, do you recognize that your soul is in peril with the disease of sexuality? If you understand that, and I'm talking about a spiritual disease, I'm not talking physical disease, because physical diseases will come as a result of uh, the physical uh, transformation from uh, the the the, uh, the from going from a spiritual love to a sexual love will cause the uh, the uh, physical disease to manifest itself at a period of time later on. This is AIDS, and this is any any, any STD. And this is this is true for whether the person's gay or not gay. In other words, if you're an evangelist or whatever Christian right you or believe you believe in, if you are out there part of the rape culture. Guess what? You don't have a ticket to heaven. You're probably going to end up going to hell. Um, as I, in other words, we have to be concerned with, if we're looking at ourselves spiritually, our relationship to God. God will understand if we have problems. God will understand that we do have problems. And God will forgive these problems. He'll overlook them. But the thing is, we have to understand this. If we don't work to improve ourselves, we don't work to understand ourselves better than we do now, then we will not develop in our relationship with God. And then as in this absence of relationship with God, other things will occur spiritually. And then basically a spiritual death is no relationship with God. That's where spiritual death comes in, with no relationship with God. And there are people in hell. There are people uh, who did not make it to heaven. Not everyone is guaranteed an entrance into heaven. And all you have to do is read the ancient text to understand this. If you want to know about the, whether or not, oh, what do, I, what do I do because I'm, this is the way I was born? Well, unfortunately, this has been a lie being spread throughout the, uh, the gay community. There is no scientific literature on this. I've seen it myself. I've seen it from the Journal of Science. None of the research reports ever 
I, I isolated and identified a gene. But this is true for all the psychological problems. Anything that's psychological, anything that's mind oriented, that's a mental illness. None of it, including alcoholism, drug addiction, um, uh, uh, bipolar, uh, schizophrenia. None of it has been identified in, in any form of genetic material. This is something that appears to occur in the mind. It does have a chemical effect. The mind does have a chemical effect on the body. But it occurs after the birth. It is not part of the genes. It's part of the mental. It's part of the psychological makeup, not part of the physical makeup. And uh, homosexuality is a, a, a spiritual, it's a psychological problem, a psychological issue. It's a psychological illness. It's, a men, it's an illness of the psyche, and this is where it needs to be addressed and identified. And it's not necessarily by going to a doctor and saying, what's wrong with me? It, it can be sort of said, just simply say, you know what, let's look and see what type of religious ideas are out there. Look around, ask questions. I'm not talking about, you know, walking off and becoming part of some group, when, you know, openly accepting. I'm, at, I'm telling you, ask questions. And don't simply ask questions from one particular group or another. Ask from around. And then ask yourself, what do you want? What do you think is your best path? If you want to be a spiritual person, if you want that spiritual relationship with God, then you need to ask yourself, what is my best path to do this? What do I want spiritually from God? What type of relationship do I want with God? And usually, if you go into the definition of the religions, what these religions actually tell you about your relationship with God, this will tell you where you sort of are in terms of, I want this, but I don't want that. I want this, but I don't want that. And that will give you your options. But unless you ask these questions, then uh, they, you, you, you're sort of just sort of floating around. And you may be happy now, but I guarantee you, if you come to that spiritual point when you realize that you're not going to get go where you expect spiritually, then you may not necessarily be happy about that. Uh, anyways, I hope this helps some people. I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, have you go one way or the other. I'm simply saying, ask questions, and not from one group, not from any other, you know, you know, thing. Ask around, and then ask, you know, pointed questions, challenge them. And that's uh, the best I can say about that. I'm pretty, pretty sure this is not going to get posted. I'm pretty sure that the group, uh, the Lesbian Answers, is not going to propose this one at all. Uh, because it's not in line with the mainstream thinking. But then I'm not a mainstream person anyway. So <laughs> you can see the popularity at my channel, how popular I am. That's because my opinions aren't necessarily popular themselves. Anyways, uh, if this helps anybody, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. And my, question, my videos are always uh, uh, free speech. They're creative commons, so you can take and use them as much as you want of this. Uh, my videos are always posted so that uh, anyone can post uh, a comment or a video response without having been censured at all. The only time I do take down videos is when they're spam. So if you have a comment or question or anything you want to do, you want to ask it in written form or you want to ask it in a video format, go right ahead. This video is fully open. All right, take it easy. Goodbye.